Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Maple Syrup Gaming and today we're going to be looking at another episode of Retro Rescue and we're going to be seeing if we can get this faulty NES to work. So basically I picked this up in a garage shell for five bucks. Uh, the description of the problem that the guy gave me is that basically uh, he had already had a lot of trouble getting his games to start. He said they would only start like one time out of 20. And I tested the cartridge slot and uh, the pins have almost no grip left on them. So I know for one that we're going to absolutely have to at least boil the NES pin, the, the 72 pin connector. Uh, however, he also said that the reason how, why he was now he put it up for sale and whatnot is that the last problem is that now there's no power to the NES, which put alarm bells off in my mind because I'm like, hmm, if you're not even getting any power, any light coming on, sometimes it can indicate a major problem and maybe not be repairable. But at the same time, I bought it because for, because for one, it was only five bucks. And even just for the casing, five bucks is more than a good deal because I'll be able to paint and mod it later. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, this will make an interesting video for you guys, seeing if we can get a faulty NES to work. Now, thinking I would have a really interesting problem, I always do a few preliminary tests once I get I got the NES back home. And it turned out that uh, with the original AC adapter, uh, if we check it out, we power it on, we have nothing. However, uh, before automatically assuming that it's a problem coming from the Nintendo itself, first step is I always plug it to a known good power supply. And to my huge surprise, if we plug in this known power supply, and we press the power button, we have our blinking red light. Obviously right now there's no game in it, which is why it's blinking red, but the, it does display. I tested it on a TV and we are getting the blinking screen, meaning that it is actually outputting video which is a very good sign because that means that this Nintendo will probably be repairable. It might only even need to boil the 72 pin connector, but today we're going to take it apart. We're going to do a full cleaning of the NES. We're going to boil the 72 pin connector and we're going to see if we can get a, a, you know, a working NES system out of that. And for only five bucks, if we do manage to get one of those, well, uh, even if I would need a new power supply, that's only about five to seven bucks online from Amazon. So we can get a uh, second, a new power supply for it really cheap. So overall, $5 for the NES, maybe $7 for a new power supply, $12 for a working toaster NES is a pretty good deal. So stay tuned. We're gonna start by taking this apart getting a look at the board inside and seeing if there's any other work we need to do uh, beyond a cleaning and uh, boiling the pins and hopefully we'll have a working NES. So step one, let's take apart this NES. So what's interesting about the NES is there's only six screws holding it in and this was before uh, they started using game bit screws on the consoles themselves. So you'll only need a regular Phillips head screwdriver for this one and you basically just have to remove the six screws. Okay, so now with all six screws that should be out, we will set those aside. We have one, two, three, four, which are the two stubborn ones. One more. And six screws. Then all we have to do is lift the top part off. Now on the inside we're going to first have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws to remove to get the metal plate here off. So we're gonna want to remove that. Okay, so now that we have that metal plate off, we're gonna set it aside. I put the eight screws that go with the metal plate on the inside as to separate them from the ones from the case. Now, this is basically the 
toaster part of the NES uh, that lowers the cart into the 72 pin connector which is back here. So again we're going to have a few more screws to remove, six more basically, one, two, three, four, five, six. Once again set them aside and do separate them by size. Perfect, so as I mentioned, just to show you, basically out of the three screws, you have the front and the one at the total back that are of the same size, they're like this basically. And the one in the middle, or the, the one closest to the front, is slightly bigger. So do remember that the bigger one goes into the first of the two holes when you're working this way. Now, we get to remove the toaster section. So best is to work with this in the open position and then basically it comes out from the front like so. Now first signs that maybe someone has already been in this which is maybe a tiny warning sign we have a airmail sticker in the back of the NES. So if someone's been in here and the NES is still not working it maybe lowers our chances that this is just a cleaning we'll need. But uh, first signs, if I look at the board, although it's old, it's dusty, it's looking pretty nice. I'm going to give you guys a closer view once I have it totally out of the NES. But uh, for the moment, uh, I would say we're looking, it's looking pretty good that uh, this we're going to get a working NES out of this. So uh, basically the next step is we're going to be fully removing the board. There's one last screw down here that's basically holding the board and the power section in. Got the last one here. We'll just pull it out and get that screw right there. So basically this is only holding on from the connectors. Now basically we're going to want to unconnect the uh, controller ports and the uh, basically power buttons at the front. So all you have to remember is that basically player one plugs to the front of the board. It's the same in every toaster and yes and player two connects on the side of the board. Okay and basically Power, the power switch connector, you cannot really make a mistake. Now, from this point on, if you, I'm going to give a really good clean to the inner case. And honestly, if you get, you basically just have to remove these screws here to get all the metal sections out. And then you just put it in a tub of hot water. It's nothing special. Same thing for the bottom here. You're going to basically just want to remove this screw, these two screws right here, and these two screws under here to get your power switches out. Tub of hot water, you clean off the bottom of the shell, but we're not going to look at that step, that step in this video simply because it's just normal cleaning. It's nothing special, don't need any special techniques, you just need to get all the metal. So here we have it, and there's a metal section underneath that you can remove. Basically, set it aside. We're looking at the board. And now let's look at the bottom, see if there's anything special we can notice. Now you guys are going to be getting a close-up right now of the board. But right now, what I can tell you is that by looking at the board, there is absolutely nothing obviously wrong with it. 
Like I said, you're getting a closer view of everything I'm seeing. I don't see any corrosion. I don't see any uh, parts that seem loose or about to come off. So uh, overall, I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, so we're just gonna disconnect completely the 72 pin adapter. And this is gonna take a bit of force, okay? It's normal because it's probably been in there for quite a few years. And this is your 72 pin adapter. This is what causes all the problems with the toaster version of the NES. This is basically, because of this system, this is what you know reduces the contact with the cartridge and this was, is what makes it in, uncompatible with Famicom cartridges. So this we're gonna be boiling further down and we're gonna be looking at that in a separate part of the video. So before we do that, let's just do a general board cleaning here for our uh, NES board. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the top section of the board. So I got you guys a closer view in so that we can look a little bit better at the cleaning process, which is gonna be basically a first step. We're gonna clean it, we're gonna boil the pin, we're gonna see if we, we, we get a functioning system. If we do, all the better. If not, since there's nothing visible on the board, we're gonna have to start testing components one by one, testing resistors and whatnot. But we'll look at that if it's needed. It's actually quicker in my opinion to do a quick clean, put it all back together, test it, see if it's working. If it is, we know we can stop there. If not, we take it apart again, because as you can see, it takes like under 10 minutes to take a Nintendo apart, and we work from there. So. Number one is we take some rubbing alcohol, as usual, and we're gonna start by just dousing the board. Pretty, you wanna get a lot on there. Anyway, it doesn't damage the components since right now there's no current working through it. And since it's alcohol, it should evaporate pretty quickly. And then I'm basically gonna take a regular dish brush and you're just gonna lightly go over the whole board. You could use a toothbrush as well, which I'm gonna be using later on the pins, but since I'm working with a bigger surface, to me it makes more sense to use the dish brush. Now there is a separate power section that we could take apart, but we're not gonna do that unless really we're having problems. I was gonna do it originally when I thought the NES wasn't getting power to it, but since the light's coming on and we're getting power, I highly doubt we're gonna to have to take apart that section to have any problems with it. Now, um, the underside of the board, we're gonna do the same thing. The only thing is you wanna be very careful with these little caps here. You really don't wanna rip any off or, or even bend them to weaken them. So we're gonna scrub, but we're gonna scrub very lightly. And if you're using a toothbrush, you have to be even more careful because it's really easy to unfortunately go over them and damage them. So we're just gonna go very lightly with the brush. The point anyway is just to work any dirt off that could be on there. And since there's no corrosion, we don't have to really focus on any spot. And there we go. So that's the first step of the cleaning process. Okay, so now with our after our one over with the alcohol, uh, honestly, I am really surprised. This board is in actually really nice shape. It's one of the nicer NES boards I found. So to actually think that this NES isn't in working order is actually pretty surprising. So I'm just gonna refocus the camera really quick. Okay, so first, before we go on to the WD-40, we're going to give a little bit more attention to the pin here because you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this pin connector here is really nice and clean. So I'm gonna give another shot of alcohol, but this time I'm going to be taking the toothbrush. 
to give it a little more specific and in-depth clean. Because this is the section that we'll be contacting Okay, so first off, looking pretty nice. Now, second step, we're going to be taking our WD-40 and we're going to be doing a light, even coat over the board. And then, once again, we're going to take our cleaning brush go lightly over. And down here on our pin connector we're going to be taking our scrubbing pad and going one over the pin connectors. And you see that there's actually, there was a little bit of like, built up corrosion over the years, but that's just normal oxidization. Any electronic system in contact with air is going to be getting some of that. And I like to just dry off lightly the components, try to get off the excess WD-40 that would be left on it. But don't worry, it can't damage your components. It actually protects it against rust, gives it a small protective layer. Just gonna refocus here for the other side. And same thing as before, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Just being a little more careful because of the different components that can be slightly more fragile. And our scouring pad as before to focus a little bit more on the pins. And that should do it. Same thing, just wipe it off. If you do bend any of those caps, just try to lightly bend them back in place like I just did here. My first press was a little bit too hard and I was and I might have bent this cap to contact that part right there and you don't want that. So you can always just make sure that these caps are not in contact with any of the other components. And there we go. We should have a nice functioning and clean board now unless there is a specific component that was damaged. So I'm going to clean the shell uh, and then we're going to meet for boiling the 72 pin connector. We're going to look at that. Then we're going to reassemble this NES and hopefully we'll have a working one. Okay, so here we are ready to boil the 72 pin connector. So I have a pot of hot water. It's not boiling yet, but we're gonna get it going. And basically, uh, all you're gonna do is put a splash of vinegar in the water. This is gonna help remove any corrosion that could be on the 72 pin connector. And as you see, I'm using a strainer to make sure that the pin doesn't contact the bottom of the pot, because you can get hot spots at the bottom, at the bottom and it could actually melt the metal uh, melt the plastic, sorry, or damage the, the connector. So all you're going to do is you're going to submerge the connector, make sure it's all the way in the water. And once the water is boiling, you're going to wait about 10 to 15 minutes 
pull out your pin, let it dry off and cool off, and then we're going to be ready to put it back in the Nintendo. So, now that we have the pin boiled, I reassembled the Nintendo and we're going to test it out and see if we got our problem fixed. So, just as a quick, you know, reminder of what we did so far, for the power problem, it was actually not a power problem, it was the power supply that was damaged. So keep that in mind whenever your Nintendo stops lighting up, before assuming that the Nintendo itself has a problem, try and see if you can pick up a spare power supply and test that out first. If you pick one up from Amazon, like I said, it's less than 10 bucks. And if it ends up not being your problem, you can always send it back to them for a return. So basically here we have our test system set up. The Nintendo's plugged in. We're gonna pop a game in, our classic Castlevania. Oop. And there we go, guys. We have our Nintendo back in working order. So basically by boiling the pins, what we did is we actually got the pins to tighten up once again, being able to make contact with the game. And basically we have our Nintendo all cleaned up on the inside. So possibly there was a secondary problem that we fixed by just cleaning up the residue. But really that's the first step in a Nintendo. Before you go any further and you start messing with different parts and testing with a with, it, with meters and whatnot to see if there's any other parts that are in malfunctioning. I say you give it a good and thorough cleaning like we just went through here. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna have a functional system. And when you don't, generally you'll see physical damage or you'll see water damage on the board itself. And you'll be able to easily identify which parts aren't working. So this isn't the only Nintendo repair we're gonna do. This is the first faulty Nintendo I pick up since I started doing the Retro Gaming Rescue on the channel. But everything seems working, so for $5, a little bit of time and a little bit of white vinegar, we managed to get a perfectly working Nintendo system. And just to prove it to you guys, we can start up our game. And there we go, we have one perfectly working Nintendo system. So, I've got an extra system in my collection now. We'll be able to look through maybe a couple of different mods in the future. So if you guys like this content, please leave a like and do subscribe. It does help the channel a lot and it'll help me push more content out there for you guys on a regular basis. So thank you once again for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video.